Okay, this is what I use for my stove. This is what we're starting out with. Okay, here's my old stove. And um, we're just going to basically replicate this. Uh, with a I'm going to make it a little bit taller this time. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. All right, and then uh, what I do is I just sand off the bottom like this. Okay, I went a little bit further on the stove than I did with the other one. After sanding it off, I, I polished it, kind of gave it a chrome look. I don't know. You're going to need one of those to do it, but uh, it comes out kind of cool. What do you think? Okay, now you're just going to remove the top like that. Now we have this just I'm like just that. going to cut the top off. Uh, the inserts, I like them to come out. People, for whatever reason, like to make those secure where they can't come out. But if you're using any type of coloring agent to it, it's a good idea to remove it because then you can take out the, the leftover color. Now, I make this to fit perfectly. Now, the final cut is actually going to be on its side when you have these two placed inside of one another. I don't know if you can see that very well. But you lay it down and you make your final cut and that gives you the perfect fit on the inside. So that's basically how I made that stove. Um, this is my older one, the jets are lower. Here's the newer one that I made. And we're gonna run an experiment which one works best. You can see one is slightly lower than the other. It's ongoing, right? It's ongoing. It's just uh, always the gear test and review. But uh, we'll get back to you on how this whole thing works out. Again, make sure that you make these little notches right there so the fuel can exit into the walls of the canister. By the way, this thing weighs, I think it was 12 grams, 0.4 ounces. I could be mistaken. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm just crazy, and I love to invent and play. I'm a tinker. I bet you. Okay, are we're too. jumping ahead here, but what I did was I uh, I cut this to the size, um, and I drilled these holes all the way around. Now, it's a little different than my other stove. Uh, let me show you the difference. Okay, here's my two stoves. The one on the right is the one you saw me demonstrate in my other video. This one is the new one off to the left. Now you can see I use much larger holes. We're going to burn them both side by side. And again, the thing I love about this stove is you can just take it apart and you can clean it out. I like to add a little food coloring to mine and what it does is it just helps you see the fuel. Okay, here's my two stoves burning. You can see they have not quite uh, bloomed out yet, but they're on their way. Okay, both stoves are running now. The one to the right is my latest one. We're gonna put the pot on there and you can kind of see how that's doing. It seems to be uh, doing pretty well. I haven't actually done any kind of time testing or anything, but it, it's doing its deal. Now we're gonna put the pot on the other one. We'll see how that does. Now this is the one, my original one, and it's got smaller holes, it's a little down low, and uh, you can kind of see, I'm not quite centered on there, but uh, nevertheless, it seems to be working pretty well. Okay, this is with the latest stove that I make made, it's got one cup of water on there and we're going to start our timer and see just how long this takes and we'll be right back to you okay we got a full rolling boil about five minutes 45 seconds that's with the new one 
Now we're going to do the same experiment with the old one. Okay, we're going to put the other pot on now. Start the stopwatch and we will report back to you what we find. This is with the old stove. Okay, we're at 420 thereabouts and we've got a full boil. This is obviously a lot more efficient than the new stove that I made. Okay, conclusion. Old stove, new stove. The older stove is more efficient and I believe the reason is not so much because of the diameter of the jets or the holes, but because of the distance where they lie in relation to the top of the stove. I do believe that it's heating up the stove more, which is in turn heating up the fuel more, which is making it more efficient. Now, you can see there's a very short distance from where these jets are to the top of the stove. I don't think it gives it enough room to heat the stove up sufficiently. Now, take into consideration if you're in extremely cold weather, you're going to want even more. So my next experiment is going to actually be a taller stove with the holes up just a little bit, but to have a little bit more mass above above the, the, the jets so that uh, it'll be heating up the fuel more efficiently. So that's my conclusion. Smaller jets, I don't think really pay too much into it. Um, I've made a lot of different stoves and I've tried all kinds of holes and none of them seem to make that big of a difference. I did try extra small ones here. Now, you're, now I know, you're going to ask me, what size are the dart holes? I should know that, but I don't. But let me just tell you this. Um, you take like a regular push pin with the little plastic tips. They seem to fit in there perfectly. Now I did drill these. Don't try to push pin these because the aluminum's too thick and you get all kinds of dents and stuff. So you're going to have to go to a, a hobby shack or hobby place and you're going to have to get really, really ultra fine drill to make these holes. All right. Big T signing off. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And it's all about R&D, right? Making something better. Okay, take it easy, you guys. Bye.